We are working towards a future where robots can not only be used as industrial machines, but can help us with our daily life. For example, they could become rescue helpers for people in danger, skilled co-workers at construction sites, or they could assist us in case we get sick or injured. To do that, robots need to be able to manipulate physical systems as effectively as humans do. But for all the talk about robots taking our jobs, we're still pretty far away from that. In fact, robots are usually still pretty clumsy and inflexible. For example, an industrial manipulator can man pick and place components with uh, amazing precision and without ever getting bored. But if the environment changes only slightly, the machine usually fails epically. We believe that in order to improve that, Robots need to actually understand the physical laws of the world we live in, and more importantly, they need to be able to anticipate the physical implications of their actions. So long story short, our long-term mission is to endow robots with, hu with human-level dexterity when it comes to manipulating of complex physical systems. However, this turns out to be a great challenge when we look all around and see what amazing things humans can do. It does take us several years of practice, but after that we can easily manipulate soft and rigid objects, throw things more or less precisely, and collaborate to reach common goals. And if we are willing to invest even more time into practicing, we can master even more sophisticated tasks. And one example for such a task is puppeteering. It is the art of bringing marionettes to life, and it has been practiced as a form of entertainment since ancient Greece. Since marionettes are underactuated, high-dimensional systems, their control is pretty unintuitive. But in the hands of a skilled puppeteer, they can produce motions that are incredibly expressive and compelling. Now, in our case, we would like to be entertained by robots, in particular by this one. It is a human-sized, dual-armed robot called Yumi, and it provides a nice platform for us to investigate the tools that are needed to endow robots with the skill of manipulating complex, dynamical systems such as marionettes. Now I would like to dive right into the technical aspects of this challenge. So let's start by looking at the system components we will need to describe this problem. First of all, we have our marionette, which we model as a mass spring system, and we um, represent its state by the parameter x. Now for further information about this model choice, I would like to refer you to the paper. We call the rigid connectors that the robot is gripping with its end effectors and are connected to the marionette by strings, the handles. And finally, we have our robot puppeteer, which is described by its forward, kinem by its forward kinematics and its joint angles. And we use these joint angles as our control commands and denote them by P. Now we can use this setup to generate time discretized motion, tra tra motion trajectories using numerical simulation. This means that we can give the motion trajectory of the entire robot as an input to our system and compute the resulting marionette motions by integrating its dynamics forward in time. Now the problem we are actually interested in solving is the motion control task, which essentially means that or ask the question, how does the robot actually need to move such that the marionette expresses a desired behavior? Before we can answer that, we first of all need a way of specifying how a desired behavior of a specific puppet looks like. In our case, we do this by designing a target motion trajectory using keyframing, and we denote it by x hat. Now, in this case, we have a model of a simple bird or a, a simple model of a bird, rather. And so we design something that's, um, that looks like, roughly like a flapping motion. We can, formulate this optimize, or we can formulate this motion control task as an optimization problem, which means that we can minimize for our control input P, and our objective O is a function of X and P. Now, O, in our case, is the sum of two essential objectives. First of all, we have this quadratic one, which tries to match the physical motion of the marionette as closely as possible to this predefined target trajectory. And we also have this term that penalizes high accelerations of the control, which promotes smooth robot motions. 
Now we can solve this optimization problem and we end up with a choreographed motion for our robot puppeteer, which manipulates our marionette in a physically valid way. I'm not going to show you the resulting animation just yet. We first of all need to get some work done. So let's have a closer look of how we can actually solve this optimization problem. Typically, we would like to apply gradient-based methods, and we can do that by computing the gradient of O with respect to P. We can do that by using the chain rule. Now, the, the key element we need to determine here is X as a function of P. And since we are dealing with uh, dynamical systems here, this is captured by Newton's second law of motion. We can solve this forward simulation by either using an explicit or an implicit time-stepping scheme. However, in our case, we are dealing with very stiff systems, so explicit integration is uh, usually numerically unstable, so not applicable here. This leaves us with an implicit integration which, is, um, which has much better numerical properties. However, it introduces a different kind of challenge. X of P does not have a closed form expression. And this poses a problem when we want to compute our gradient, because to do that we need this total derivative dx dp, which is not straightforward to compute when there is no explicit mapping between X and P. We can circumvent this problem by using sensitivity analysis. It leverages the fact that we can, for any P, we can compute the corresponding X, in our case by solving this forward simulation, such that this dependent G equals zero is true. That means the dependency between X and P can be captured by this relation and is or corresponds to Newton's second law. Now the implicit function theorem tells us that if G equals zero for all P, it implies that this must also be true for its total derivative. And by solving this linear system for the XDP, we end up with an analytic expression for it. This term is also called the sensitivity since it gives us a notion of how X changes with respect to P. Now that we know how to compute this term, we can plug it into our gradient and we are ready to apply first order methods such as gradient descent or LBFGS. However, these methods usually converge far too slowly. So a better option would be to use Newton's method, where we also use the gradient in order to find a suitable search direction. Sorry, did I say gradient? I mean Hessian. The Hessian. We can compute this Hessian by taking another derivative of our gradient. Doing this implies a bunch of chain rules and matrix multiplications, and I don't want to bother you with this now. Please believe me when I tell you that we end up with this term. So let's analyze this a bit. The components we have in here is, first of all, the sensitivity, which is good because we already computed it. Then we have a bunch of second order partial derivatives of our objectives, which are typically straightforward to compute. And we also have these partial derivatives of our sensitivity. Now we can compute those using the implicit function theorem again. However, those are third order tensors. So they typically, it takes a long time to compute them and also they can uh, cause our Hessian to be indefinite. But luckily, Newton's method can use any positive definite matrix instead of the true Hessian. So since it's very impractical to compute these higher order terms, we can choose to neglect them. And when we do that, we end up with a generalized Gauss-Newton approximation for our Hessian which we basically get for free since we can reuse the sensitivity term we've already computed for the gradient. Now let's summarize a bit what we have seen so far by having a look at this trajectory optimization loop. We are solving the following algorithm until convergence. First of all, we compute the sensitivity uh, using techniques from sensitivity analysis and use this term to compute the gradient and the Hessian approximation. Then we can apply Newton's method to find a suitable search direction and use this to find a good step size by uh, applying backtracking line search. Then we update our control P and finally um, compute the corresponding X for our new P by solving the forward simulation. You can see again how this looks like for our bird example. 
Now, when we look at this, we see that we basically solve a standard unconstrained optimization scheme here with one key difference. For each candidate P, we need to recompute the corresponding X in order to make sure that the assumptions we make in sensitivity analysis hold before we evaluate any of the derivatives. Now, the advantage of this formulation is that we don't have to enforce the physics as constraints, but still each individual step we get from this optimization results in a physically valid motion. Now, finally, we can play back this result in simulation and see if we're happy with it. But since we call ourselves a robotics lab, having this work in simulation is not enough. We actually want to see these results being applied to the real world. So without further ado, let's have a look at some results. Here you can see the physical counterpart of the bird we've just seen in simulation. And we fabricated it ourselves by using a um, couple of heavy steel balls and a 3D printer. Some more results in simulation. On one side, a fish performing a swimming motion, and on the other side, a, a snake. One more uh, example from the physical world is a giant dragon um, performing a flying motion which typically looks like a sinusoidal. Now let me use, or I would like to use this example to talk a little bit about the design of the marionette, in particular the design of the handles. So typically what we have in mind when you think about a specific puppet is its design and the corresponding target motion. Picking or designing appropriate um, handles and picking suitable string lengths for these inputs is not a very intuitive task, but it's a very important one because these parameters have a direct uh, or directly influence um, the, or they have a huge impact on the space of motions the, the puppet can actually perform. So what we can do is we can start with an initial guess run our optimization, then uh, run the animation and see if we're happy with the result. However, you can see in this example that we are not matching the target trajectory really closely and also the robot needs to perform really large movements. So what we rather would like to do is design or optimize these design parameters alongside our motion. And since all our objectives are smooth with respect to these design parameters, we can actually do this by applying sensitivity analysis again. So at the conceptual level, it is enough to extend our optimization variables um, by, the, by some design parameters. And in our case, these are the shapes of these handles. So in this example for the Chinese dragon, the optimization came up that for this specific motion, a triangle-shaped handle performs much better. And this would have been difficult to intuitively predict. So when we play the, animo uh, the animation again, side by side, we can see that with this new handle design, we can match the target trajectory much more closely. The last example I would like to show you is a puppy. And here we designed two different uh, target trajectories for the same design. One of them is a trotting motion. and the other one a bounding motion. Now we've also run experiments with its physical counterpart. Here you can see the example where it performs a bounding motion. Now this is the largest physical system we run experiments with and here we experienced some limitations. We're currently play back the robot's motion in an open loop manner meaning that we pass on the joint commands received in simulation to the physical robot without considering any feedback. So we observe that depending on the complexity of the underlying dynamical system, the physical prototype can start to drift over time, get out of sync, and no longer resemble the nominal trajectory. 
This is not particularly surprising to us since there are still aspects of the marionette that we are currently not modeling, such as, for example, friction and play in the joints or deformation in the frame structure. So some mismatches between the real world and the simulation are unavoidable. However, we could start tackling this problem by adding feedback loops to our um, framework, which can be used to stabilize the motion and enable the marionette to recover from these perturbations. This will be part, or should be part, of future investigations. Let me finish up with uh, some conclusions. We present a computational framework for robotic animation of marionettes. We validated our methodology with different puppet designs and target motions. Our framework is generic in the sense that it is not limited to this puppeteering application, but can be used to control all kinds of physical systems, given that there is a differentiable model available. We show that we can optimize for uh, design parameters alongside the motion using techniques from sensitivity analysis. We also ran experiments with uh, a couple of physical prototypes. Since we're optimizing directly for joint position commands, the motions received in simulation can seamlessly be transferred to the physical world. Since we're doing this in an open loop manner, it can result in the limitation that mismatches between simulation and real world can occur. We can start tackling this by adding feedback mechanisms to our framework, which will be part of future investigations. I would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>